nuclear explosions by instruments sixty thousand miles above the earth beyond the range of sound but not beyond the reach of unleashed radiation is the mission of the vela satellite program during an expected lifespan of three years the vela satellites will report to scientists any unusual changes in levels of natural or man-made radiation originating on earth or from the vastness of space the assigned vela booster is the titan 3c the first to be launched from the air force eastern test range in more than a year the titan 3c is the most powerful launch vehicle of the titan series and placement of two spacecraft in distant orbits will demonstrate its versatility <laughs> The Titan 3C ground support environment is known as the Integrate Transfer Launch Facility. Interconnected by double railway lines are the distant launch pads, the intermediate solid motor assembly building, and the vertical integration building, which comprise the standard space launch system. Components of standard launch vehicle number 18 arrived at Cape Kennedy in late 1969. The liquid propellant first stage which develops 470,000 pounds of thrust, was moved to the vertical integration building for receiving inspection and erection on the mobile transporter. The two engines of the first stage are ignited only after the solid rocket motors have boosted it to an altitude of 25 miles above the Earth. Then, the self-igniting hypergolic propellants of this stage burn for nearly two and a half minutes. The single engine second stage provides a thrust of 100,000 pounds and burns for three and a half minutes. The third stage is known as the trans stage. While it is much smaller in size, it is the key element in the great extension of the Titan III capability. It consumes the same hypergolic propellants used in the first two stages and builds a thrust of 16,000 pounds. The fuel and oxidizer are turbo pump fed to ensure a command start stop capability which adds extreme flexibility to its performance. Upon completion of core assembly, the transporter moved the vehicle to the solid motor assembly building where stage zero boosters would be attached. The importance of the rail lines connecting the assembly points with a pad is obvious. Unlike earlier vehicles, the Titan III is assembled on a transporter which also serves as its launcher. Motive power is supplied by two diesel locomotives with motors synchronized to ensure perfect alignment. Two towers support the missile as it is transferred. The solid rocket motors arrive as multiple segments 10 feet in diameter and 10 feet high. Stacked five deep with a dome at the top and extended thrust chamber at the bottom each motor towers 85 feet. Together, the solid rocket motors provide two and one half million pounds of liftoff thrust. The power of the tremendously capable and versatile Titan 3C can place into orbit payloads of as much as 25,100 pounds. The two Vela satellites in the spin test facility have a combined weight of a little more than 1,500 pounds. So this mission will be a test of intricate maneuvers perfectly executed rather than a demonstration of sheer power. Each vela is a 26-sided polyhedron 50 inches in diameter. The outer covering of each craft mounts thousands of solar cells which deliver up to 120 watts of power for its communications and instrumentation needs. Both of the nuclear surveillance spacecraft have a central cylinder which houses an apogee motor and an equipment mounting platform for the instrumentation elements. Because the velas are spin stabilized in space, the batteries and all equipment must be disposed in perfect balance. Spin tests confirm this balanced placement. Instrumentation aboard the vela satellites include X-ray, gamma ray and neutron detectors, optical electromagnetic pulse sensors, a series of radiation experiments 
and a logic system for nuclear test detection. The nuclear energy detection instruments are the most complex devised to date and will provide better data on radiation from solar flares as well. Upon completion of the attachment of the solid rocket motors, the assembled Titan 3C number 18 comes through the doors of the solid motor assembly building on its way to the launch pad. The solid rocket motors provide a liftoff thrust of two and a half million pounds and carry the Titan to an altitude of about 25 miles before separation. Steering of the stage zero solid rocket motors is provided by the thin red tipped thrust vector control units, one on each side of the assembled rocket. Pressurized nitrogen and nitrogen tetroxide are injected into the thrust chamber to alter the angle of thrust and thus change the direction of flight. This would be the 100th Titan to be launched from the Air Force Eastern Test Range. As soon as the Titan arrives at the pad, a period of intensive coordination begins. Members of the 6555th Aerospace Test Wing, the launch agency, confer with the range safety officer and other range elements to review procedures and schedules. On the ninth level of the mobile service structure, the trans stage is checked out. The key to Titan III's versatility, the trans stage consists of a multiple start propulsion module and a control module. The latter contains the inertial guidance system, electrical instrumentation and tracking and flight safety systems, all the major components of flight control. The missile guidance computer sends appropriate steering commands to the stage zero thrust vector control system, as well as to the actuators of all the core stage engines and the attitude control system valves. The tracking and flight safety system facilitates radar tracking of the vehicle. A self-destruct capability is also built into the Titan III flight safety system. Data on the performance of all the vehicle systems is sent back to Earth through telemetry transmitters located in the trans stage. Vibration and acoustic information about the vehicle structure during flight is sent by a single sideband transmitter located on the second stage. But the trans stage serves as the brain which directs the execution of each element of the flight. When spin tests and all ground checkouts were completed, the Vela satellites were enclosed in a protective cylinder and moved to pad 40. Hoisted to the top of the service structure, the two nuclear monitors were mounted atop the trans stage. The protective housing was then carefully removed, revealing the two spacecraft in flight configuration. Each was checked again to make sure the transfer had incurred no damage. From the control room in the satellite assembly building, the spacecraft were interrogated and responses received. Flight simulation was programmed to the satellites to ascertain the operation of their complex systems as if functioning in a space environment they checked out perfectly. Individual checkout of all systems of the booster and the spacecraft had been completed. Now it was time for the combined systems test. This was conducted from the launch control center, a procedure much like a SRO launch CC. countdown. Uh, can you verify a range all fires have been cleared and the sequencer of central control go? Uh, Roger. I'll, I'll, uh, SRO? SRO is TC. Uh, Roger, T0-0925, sync pulse 0923. Uh, Roger, copy. Standing by for your mark, SRO. Okay, minus 60 seconds, mark. Go ahead, Espentation. Go ahead. Roger, we'll go with what we have right now. We'll continue on with the count. Do you have acceptable data? Right. Roger. Minus 10. Nine, CST eight, results indicated seven, the Titan was six, ready for launch. Five. The fueling operation began approximately five days prior to the launch date. The Titan III core stages must be loaded with 300,000 pounds of hypergolic propellants, far more than are required by any other American launch vehicle. The entire operation is remotely controlled from these panels near the pad. The toxic fuel, known as aerosene 50, is pumped aboard first. 
After that operation is secured, the oxidizer, nitrogen tetroxide, is loaded. The entire procedure is carefully monitored. Upon completion of propellant loading, the lines must be disconnected. A team of technicians clad in self-contained atmospheric protective ensembles move in to secure the contaminated propellant lines. The scape suits provide each wearer with his own life support environment completely insulated from the surrounding atmosphere. A supply of liquid air cools the rubberized suit and furnishes a breathable pressurization. Pad safety monitors the disconnect, enforcing safety limits for all personnel not directly involved with the operation. The buddy system is always used in scape suit operations. In this case, two of the crew members affect the disconnect, while the other two serve as backup or rescue men if a hazardous situation should develop. The Vela mission was outlined in Plan 10B. The inertially guided Titan 3C would be launched on a southeasterly flight azimuth, carrying it down the entire Air Force Eastern Test Range over the South Atlantic and South Africa as it achieves orbit. The plan called for the trans stage to place the payload into an initial elliptical orbit of 100 by 40,252 nautical miles. A second burn of the trans stage engine was to transfer the orbit to an ellipse of 9,340 by 60,400 nautical miles. Following a period of data collection, the Vela satellites were to be separated from the trans stage as a tandem pair. In turn, the pair would separate, and with a burn of their apogee motors, circularize their orbits at about 60,000 nautical miles above the Earth. With the first Vela in position, the second was to drift until a phasing of 180 degrees was attained. At the phase mark, number two would be slowed to match the speed of the first satellite to permit constant surveillance of both hemispheres. With a 30-minute launch window scheduled to open at 0550 Eastern Standard Time, April 8, 1970, two half-hour holds were incorporated into the countdown. The built-in holds were to reserve some contingency time if needed to assure liftoff at the opening of the desired window. All personnel switch to channel two for final status check. Channel two for final status check. DSO, that's safety go. SRO, the range is go. Test wing, 6555th Aerospace Test Group is go and you're cleared to launch. Roger. The status check is complete and all systems go. PCSRO. Go ahead, SRO. As it turned out, the safety margin of hold time was not required, and with the approaching dawn, final readiness reports were received in the launch control center. Roger. Initial conditions are go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Water is indicated on 1, 0. Photographic and electronic tracking of the Titan III flight gave every promise of a successful mission. With telemetry data radioed to Earth, the intricate orbit changes were traced and confirmed as nominal. The first Vela was positioned at 60,000 miles, and the second coasted to the 180-degree phase on the opposite side of the Earth. Primary activation and checking of the satellites confirmed their readiness to perform effectively. The 14th and 15th Sentinels of the Vela series were on their lonely duty stations. After a sequence of intricate maneuvers in space, made possible only by this nation's most versatile launch vehicle, the Titan 3C.